let's bring in Marwan Bashara, who's Al Jazeera's senior political analyst, of course, joins us now from London. Uh, Marwan, uh, talking of complexities for Kamala Harris, I'd like to look at Gaza through the lens of the Democrat push to retain the presidency in November, because there is this need for peace and what would it mean, of course, for millions of Palestinians, but also for the election campaign of Kamala Harris. Well, it seems that for Kamala Harris, the best scenario is ambiguity. Uh, it seems like this has been the strategy throughout this convention. It is no coincidence that uh, none of the speakers address the question of Gaza, not even uh, coincidentally, uh, not even like a by the way kind of thing. Uh, even when AOC spoke, she only mentioned about how wonderful Kamala Harris is trying to bring about a ceasefire, and that was the end of that. So when, when, when political circus like that uh, is really managed, is choreographed, it is done in a way whereby a message has to come through. And the message this year, it's not that Israel is our closest ally and we support Israel unconditionally, nor is it that Israel has done some terrible things in Gaza and we stand with the people of Gaza. What we would call constructive ambiguity for the campaign is let's just avoid the subject, even if it's the elephant, elephant in the room. Better just keep it that way until the elections, if possible. This way we don't have to lose the progressives and we don't have to lose the pro-Zionist crowd. But is that possible? Can she remain ambiguous for that degree of time? Because it's you know, it's still quite a long way off and, uh, you know, it could make all the difference if uh, there is any progress on a ceasefire. Well, it's been a month, Nick, you know, so it's, it's another several weeks. Now, yes, I mean, certainly she would probably address it. But in a way, again, that is ambiguous because that's all remember, there is still a president in the White House and this president is staunchly, blindly, I don't know what else, uh, you know, pro-Israel, uh, basically parroting the Israeli lines. And if you look at the at the convention or at the, at the DNC, at the, at the Democratic Party platform this year, the one that Biden's people devised, they still talk about the indispensable relationship with Israel. Because, at, you know, if you remember, Kamala Harris basically inherited uh, the, this DNC from Biden. So I think she probably say some general things, but leave the foreign policy to the president until November. And those general things we've heard from her before, there has to be a ceasefire. And the humanitarian situation needs to improve for the people in Gaza, and she'll probably leave it at that. Uh, Mo, and, uh, and from what you know, how different or otherwise is Kamala Harris's position on foreign policy, especially in the Middle East, uh, when compared to Joe Biden? It's going to be quite different, I think, from Joe Biden, but it will be very, very different from a Trump presidency or from a second Trump presidency. You know, there are uh, there are uh, two main national security advisors for uh, Kamala Harris for the past four years, and both of them uh, wrote books back in 2020. One is called Open World by Rebecca Friedman, and one is called Losing the Long Game uh, by Phil Gordon, the latter, is her national security advisor will, and will probably be her future national security advisor as president. And he said basically that America overstretched and basically was foolish in its attempt at regime change in the Middle East, in the greater Middle East, from Afghanistan to Libya, through Syria, Iraq, Iran, and so on and so forth over the past 70 years. Very critical reading of, of past American foreign policy. Rebecca Friedman in her open world basically says America needs to stop being so overstretched it needs to stop with the overreach. It needs to stop thinking of itself as some kind of a messianic force of good or bad, for that matter, meaning geopolitical, imperial, militaristic power. It needs to be modest, it needs to be pragmatic, and it needs to be think, thinking of the world as an open world, not interventionist and not protectionist either. So there's a, quite a nuance with, with Biden, but also quite a nuance with the Trump presidency. All right, uh, Marwan, thanks for that. We'll leave it there for a moment. Marwan Bashara speaking to us from London. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.